Good morning and welcome back to the show. Now, of course, this is the very last round of 2010 season. Um, already the top five have been sorted, uh, but we do have some interesting games happening this weekend. Um, first off, uh, Belmont uh, hosting Inverley um, up at Belmont. Uh, Flick, I don't think there'll be too much worry here for Inverley, and they'll probably record their last win of the year. Yeah. Yep. Good um, way to finish off the season. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Mandy Limer um, is back at Inverley again next year. Yep. Um, and um, speaking to Kate DeGrandy on the weekend, um, Belmont are looking for a coach at the moment. Um, at the moment, yeah, well, this year, Kate pretty much was doing A, B, C and D, um, which is a big ask for all right, anyone uh, to do. So... Um, Anyone uh, looking for a coaching job next year? Belmont is looking for a coach. Uh, next game, uh, Belpost Hill uh, hosting East Geelong up at uh, the Panthers ground. And, uh, yeah, they're probably be wanting to get one back for the <laughs> damage inflicted earlier in the year on them. <laughs> um, I think this will be one. We've got a couple of games around this week with a couple of the teams from the top five playing against each other. So um, for both East and Belco Hill, I think this is a good going into the finals for both sides to so just see where they're at again uh, come this time of the year. But as you said, you and Terry will be happy against each other. We'll, so. be, we'll be banging heads, don't worry <laughs> about that. Um, and of course, last time we played them, um, East Geelong recorded a 12-goal win against uh, Bell Post. And um, on that day, Brittany Chapman played a great game against Kim Martin and, and really did restrict her. Um, of course, unfortunately, she's not playing uh, for the rest of the year. But um, Jason, uh, when you play against Bell Post Hill, um, I think everyone's main worry is trying to stop Kim. Yeah, and I mean, 708 goals for the year speaks for itself, I think. Mm. Uh, definitely the key avenue to goal and not easy to start. She's had a wonderful year. So. Yeah. If you can, you know, so I've seen teams try and double up on her or try and get your tallest defender to try and play on her or, I mean, her athleticism in the circle is just outstanding. And she's a little bit similar to Julia, I think, but probably a bit more movement than Julia. Julia likes, with her strength, yep. she can just hold there. Yep. But, um, yeah, getting, getting, you know, just try and stop Kim there and uh, a couple of weeks ago, they played uh, Werribee, um, lost to Werribee by four goals. Belpost still did. So I think Werribee's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Um, and I uh, think the two goals both combined pretty well together as well. So, yes, Kim gets a lot of the credit for a number of the goals, but they, you can't not respect their goal attack. So, yeah. Um, defenders got their work cut out once again. I think um, Terry has been running Laura Schramm, um, who originally was from uh, St Albans. Uh, in goal attack with Kim uh, recently. Um, of course, also they've got a really good centre court as well. Yeah. Emma Harty, uh, Mel Holmes in the centre court there. And of course, um, Sunanu Robertson there in uh, goal defence for them. Um, so they've got a really good side overall from post to post. They're, they're reasonably strong. Um, so look, um, like I said, the five won't change. Uh, but just for a, um, a confidence building thing, uh, it'd be great if East Geelong could get up over the top and record a win. Um, the next game, uh, well, big game also, Werribee hosting Corio uh, down at Werribee. And look, people have been saying, uh, Jace, Corio, dark horse, and you don't know, is um, Sonia going to stay in wing defence or is she going <coughs> to run centre or go back into the defence? I I don't know, it's just a Yeah, it's we a were tough talking one. about this earlier today, and I definitely think Corio are the dark horse of, uh, you know, fourth spot can be a bit misleading. I think they're definitely as good as each of the other teams above them. So on any given day, they can definitely give someone a run. Mm. You know, some good, big, strong bodies that, that are effective in finals. They've proven in finals, so... I think um, last year when um, Nicole Train was playing for Thompson and Sonia there was, was there as well, I don't think uh, probably Werribee gave Nicole Trainer enough respect and because um, you know of course former Australian on the 21 goal shooter um, many years ago now but you give her the ball anywhere within five feet of the goal ring and pretty much it's a goal yeah um, and um, she just sucks in those defenders they'd love to try and jump and swat the ball away yep. but um, end of the day the umpire always buys obstruction and you, next minute now you're out of play she's just you know steps in goal and you're in big trouble. Yeah, definitely um, don't underestimate it. Flick, you might even be going out to umpire that game later on today, possibly. Who would know? 
Who would know? You've actually umpired a couple of um, big games uh, this uh, year. Werribee and North Geelong. <laughs> there was only three goals in that. Um, and then there was another game. Invalier Anarchy. Invalier Anarchy. There was only a couple of goals in that. Yeah. Must be my That was a draw. Umpire. That was a draw. A draw, that, yep. a draw that game. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. First year on the panel and look what I get. <laughs> Not even a full year. Done I know, yeah, half a year. Half a year. And Thankfully, though, they are, um, especially when you're playing these top, you know, five sides, they are clean games and the girls know when they've done something wrong. So if you pull them up, they, they're they pretty, yep, yeah, righto, I admit that I did that kind of thing. So, um, you know, they, they're obvious contacts and obvious obstructions and things like that. So, um, yeah, and, and with the way that the league's gone this year, if, you know, the tribunals and things, I think the players have really stepped up and, and are taking it a bit more seriously on, on how they deal with the umpiring. Yeah. All right, uh, North Geelong, next game, hosting West Geelong. Uh, down at the old North ground. I don't think North will have much trouble there, Jace, uh, getting up over the West Geelong. No, North have had a pretty good uh, second half of the season. Though. They were probably yeah. a little, little bit disappointed by their standards in the first half, but definitely finished off strong and have pushed a few of the top teams, so I think they'd get a good win today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bannockburn um, hosting Anarchy um, out of Bannockburn. Boy, I don't know, Flick. Uh... This could actually be quite... Close, I think. Going on um, what Jason was saying a little bit earlier with Anarchy and the way they played last week um, against a, such a tough side as Winchelsea, um, I would think that that Anarchy will come uh, across the top of Bannockburn. Yeah, I think so. Um, and it depends on mm -hmm. what side Bannockburn play too. They do have a lot of players coming in and out. So mm. um, I think it also depends on who plays for Anarchy. I know last week they didn't have Olivia Mitchell, but Morgan Mitchell was a handful on her own. So Did Olivia play? No, Olivia couldn't last oh. week because she was with us at him. She's part of our him oh. team, but Morgan was still out there playing. So it yep. mm. depends who they have this week. But uh, if they have a full side, I think they could get over the top there. Yep. And Morgan Mitchell, of course, was in goal shooter last week yeah, against you was. guys? Yep. Okay, and she plays at Hume as well? Uh, no, she started with us at the start of the year, but due to schooling, and then she's actually uh, a champion hurdler. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if many people know that, but from all reports, she's an absolute gun on the junior hurdles. So I think those commitments just pulled her away from, from strong commitment to serious netball, which was needed. Mm. And I believe there's actually a younger, another younger Mitchell sister as well. There's there three, is. She I think, ran um, around for B grade and A grade last week and was definitely a handful. So I haven't seen all three of them together on the court at the same time, but I wouldn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're a handful. Yeah, they are. They're really good players. Uh, it's just a shame that um, Anarchy couldn't get probably Olivia down there more often yeah. during the season because uh, I know she's um, uh, a handful as far as defensive end goes. Yeah, and she, she caused Kim Martin a lot of problems last year yep. um, when they played. But um, well, there you go. You can only play with what you've got, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you can't do any more than that. And, of course, uh, Winchester C uh, hosting Thompson at Winchester's home ground, last game of the round. We should be looking for a, a good win there, I'm assuming, Jace. Yeah, 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 well, I mean, we take each game as it comes and fingers crossed we can uh, just finish off with a good end of the season. What's well, been a good season for us. Um, obviously, we're sitting on top of the ladder at the moment, so there's still a few things I want to work on going into finals, but it gives us a chance to have a run and have a good hit out. Um, I know Thompson don't have the names that they have previously, but they've been good tussles even earlier this year. There was some good competitive netball on the day, so it'd be nice for us to have a good finish. All right. I think we might wind it up there. Um, Jason, thanks for joining us this morning. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. And Flick, you too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck today <laughs> with your, wherever you're umpiring. Thank you. Um, Uncle Dick and the boys will be on in a minute with the football show. Um, good luck today in netball, and we'll catch up with everyone next week. Bye for now.